Now let's look at some basic properties of integrals. And the first one here is pretty easy. The integral of a constant times a function is simply the constant times the integral of the function. And if that doesn't strike you as obvious, let's look at a couple of quick examples. All we're saying is this. The integral, in this case, we'll have the integral of 7x cubed dx. So this is a constant 7 times a function, x cubed. x cubed, you can certainly think of that as a function. So we have a constant times a function. And this says that the integral of a constant times a function is simply the constant times the integral of the function. So we're saying that this would be equal to 7 times the integral of x cubed dx. That's all. So all this is saying is that if you have a constant multiplier in your integral, that that multiplier can pop out front like that, just like it does with derivatives. Now, if we want to, we can go ahead and integrate this. It's pretty easy. That would be 7 times x to the fourth over 4 plus c. Okay, another quick example of the same idea. Suppose we had the integral of 3 cosine x dx. So there's a constant times a function. Well, the 3 can pop out front, and so this just ends up being 3 times the integral of cosine x dx. And let's go ahead and integrate that because it's easy. The integral of the cosine function would be the sine function. So 3 sine x plus c. So a constant multiplier can be taken out of the integral sign. Okay, next idea. The integral of the sum of functions is equal to the sum of the integrals of the functions. So all this is saying is that the integral of this, suppose we have f of x plus g of x dx. So there's two functions added together the integral of the sum of two functions is equal to the sum of the integrals of those functions. So that would be the integral of f of x dx plus the integral of g of x dx. And that may strike you as intuitively obvious. Let's, uh, let's look at a quick example. If we have the integral of, say, x cubed plus x squared dx, well, this is our function x cubed plus x squared, let me fix that, x cubed plus x squared, now that certainly is a function, but also it can be thought of as the sum of two functions. So we can rewrite that as the integral of x cubed dx plus the integral of x squared dx. So that's useful because you can take a problem and break it up into smaller pieces. And these are both pretty easy to integrate. This would just be x to the fourth over 4 plus x cubed over 3 plus c. Now some people ask, well, wouldn't we need a, a plus c here on this one and on that one? And the answer is no. Uh, well, we really do, but remember, what is c? c is an unknown constant. So if we have an unknown constant here and an unknown constant here, and they're adding together, what is the sum of two unknown constants? Well, it's just an unknown constant. So we can uh, basically conglomerate those, those two unknown constants into one C right there. But the point here is that the integral of a sum is the sum of the integrals. Okay, a couple of other, a couple of other things to take note of. We said a minute ago that you can take a constant multiplier out front. So the integral of 3 sine x would be 3 times the integral of sine x dx. But you cannot do that with a variable. So if you had, for example, the integral of x sine x dx, you can't just say, well, that's x times the integral of sine x dx. That would be wrong. Okay, You can't take a variable outside the integral sign in that way. You can do that with a constant but not with a variable. Also worth noting is that the particular variable doesn't matter. For example, if you had the integral of 3x squared dx, and that equals x cubed plus c, you could also have something like the integral of 3t squared dt, 
that would equal t cubed plus c. And it's pretty common to have t for your independent variable too, because not everything changes relative to x. A lot of things change over time. So it is very common, especially in the real world, to have t as a variable. Or you might have the integral of 3r squared dr, and that would be r cubed plus c. The important thing is that the variables match. If this is a x squared, a function of x right here, we need a dx. If this is a function of t, we need a dt. And if it's a function of r, we need a dr, or any other variable. But those need to match. The variable in our function needs to match the differential. And it's also worth stating the power rule for integrals. And we've already seen this, but let's go ahead and state it just to be complete. The integral of x to the n dx is going to be x to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. And then we put our plus c. And I think it's good to think of this as a procedure. If you have a power function, x to the n, well, you take that exponent and increase it by 1 and divide by the new exponent. That's the power rule for integrals, integrating a power function. You raise the exponent by 1 and then divide by the new exponent.